What's going on, you guys? Brian here, and this is my uh, Monday Night Raw Quick Points Recap. Uh, just some of the key points of last night's Raw. Uh, we saw the return of Bray Wyatt. He attacked Finn Balor after Finn Balor lost a really quick match to Samoa Joe, uh, leaving him laying with Sister Abigail. So, obviously... That's going to be a feud going into SummerSlam. Um, my opinion, though, um, I, I hope that they do something big with Bray Wyatt. Now, you know, having him return, and hopefully they have they do something big with him now, because the last time they did something with him, it was not that great. I mean, they haven't done very much with him as far as a push wise. So hopefully, this is a after this feud with Finn Balor, um, he can move on to some better things, and hopefully he's used a lot better than he was before. Um, um, we also heard from the brand new WWE Universal Champion. That's right, we have a new Universal Champion, and it is Brock Lesnar who cashed in last Sunday night at Extreme Rules, uh, defeating Seth Rollins after Seth Rollins, uh, along with Becky Lynch, won their winner-take-all Extreme Rules t um, mixed tag match over Lacey Evans and Baron Corbin. Um, we heard from him as well as his advocate, Paul Heyman. They talked about how they told everybody so that Brock was going to cash in, and then they would proceed to announce, or at least Heyman would announce, that there was going to be a 10-man all-star cross-branded battle royal to determine the number one contender for Brock's universal title at SummerSlam. So, and I'll get into who was in that match in just a little bit. Uh, we saw... Um, Natalia become the number one contender. Speaking of um, a another championship match set for SummerSlam, we saw Natalia become the number one contender to the Raw Women's Title. She won a fatal four-way elimination match, which I, in my opinion, I thought was very boring. No offense to the four women that were in there. It was Natalia, Carmella, Alexa Bliss, and Naomi, no offense to those four women, but that match was a very boring. I mean, they had Alexa, you know, doing the heel thing where she would be outside the ring for most of the match, only coming in when she can get an advantage. And But she wound up losing to Natalia. It came down to her and Natalia as the final two, and she wound up tapping onto the sharpshooter. But the matchup, in my opinion, was very boring. Um, nothing really exciting there. Uh, afterwards, the, uh, afterwards, the, um, the War of the Words, War of Words started between Becky, uh, who was at ringside to watch that match, and Natalia, after Natalia won, they started, um, getting into a verbal contest uh, on the microphone. So it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top in that Raw Women's title match. Of course, um, Natalia and our, of course, uh, SummerSlam will be in uh, Toronto, Canada, um, Natalia's home country. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Um, we saw a new... WWE 24-7 champion crown, as once again, R-Truth has become, uh, became the new 24-7 champion last night. He won it from Drake Maverick in one of the most funniest segments of this whole 24-7 championship since it was created. Um, so, Drake Maverick, who was the champion, uh, him and his wife were at a hotel, getting ready to uh, consummate their marriage, or consummate their marriage, 
and the what they thought was a uh, one of the hotel workers bringing up the champagne cart turned out to be a referee and Drake Maverick got worried. He started looking up under looking under the bed, not realizing that our truth was hiding in the the cart. And he came he got he came out of the cart and went after Drake. He wound up pinning him and became once again for the I don't know, upteenth time the twenty four seven champion. So um, if you did not see this segment, I would recommend going and checking it out because I thought it was a very funny segment. Which, of course, brings us to the uh, main event, which was the 10-man all-star cross-branded battle royal, which featured Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, uh, Baron Corbin, Cesaro, Lashley, Braun Strowman, Rey Mysterio, Sami Zayn, uh, Roman Reigns, and I believe that was it, and Big E of the New Day. And this one was, um, of course, you know, the winner of this one would face Brock Lesnar and challenge him for the Universal title at SummerSlam. Um, I thought the match was good. I thought it was, you know, it was what it was. It was a battle royal. You know, last man standing goes on to SummerSlam to challenge Brock. Um, I my thought on the match was, I thought it was either going to be Strowman, Roman Reigns, or uh, Seth Rollins. But because you know those three have had history with Brock, so you figure, you know, hey, those three are the top favorites. Uh, it wound up coming down to Randy Orton and Seth Rollins. Randy would go for the RKO, Rollins would counter, hit the stomp, and then throw Randy Orton over the top rope and eliminating him. So it will be on Sunday night, August 11th at SummerSlam, Seth Rollins challenging Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship. Will Rollins be able to dethrone the Beast? So we'll have to wait and see. But my thoughts on the Battle Royal, I was happy that Rollins won, even though he, you know, he was kind of the top three. Um, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, Lesnar did cash in on him and took the title from him. So it kind of made sense to have Rollins in that role of winning the Battle Royal, even though there were some, some of the guys like Big E, Cesaro, Rey Mysterio, Sami Zayn, I really didn't think had much of a chance of winning that battle royal, especially with Strowman, Roman Reigns, and Rollins, and Randy Orton, and Lashley in, in there as well. But um, I was happy that, that uh, Rollins won. It continues that feud between him and Lesnar. So we'll have to wait and see what happens at SummerSlam when those two collide. Um, there was some other stuff that happened on Raw that was was eh, not that important. Um, I just thought that those three things, the Battle Royal, um, I thought the Battle Royal was good. I really liked that one. I thought Bray Wyatt coming back and starting a feud with Finn Balor, I thought that was really good to see Bray coming back. Um, as far as in ring and the 24 7 championship segment where our truth beat Drake Maverick in the in his hotel in his hotel room um, I thought that was very entertaining as well so the other stuff that happened on why I didn't think were was very exciting except for those three things so um, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens tonight on SmackDown. Um, of course, the big thing going into SmackDown tonight will be that Shane McMahon is going to hold a town hall meeting where the superstars can voice their opinions. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. But um, my overall thoughts, on, over, overall thoughts on Raw, except for those three things that I mentioned, 
everything else was just not really that good at all. So um, if I had to give it a, if I had to give it a, my honest opinion, um, would not be a episode I would recommend checking out, um, except for those three, with Bray Wyatt returning the Battle Royal and then the whole 24/7 Championship segment they had. Those were the only good three good things I could see that I would recommend checking out. The other stuff, not so much. So, um, with that, in, with that being said, this has been my key points recap of what happened on last night's episode of Monday Night Raw. As always, I am Brian, and thank you for watching.